All right, guys, got a million little tips from Bobby. Each thing is gonna help me keep this motor running perfectly and make sure that it lasts a long time for me. So I'm gonna jump up there, get a flight. Now, when you wanna clean up the motor, and let's say it's got some oil and grease and crap on it yeah. that water won't handle, okay? Starter fluid is a very good cleaner. Okay. Starter spray. Starter fluid. Starter spray. It's better, okay. But what's nice about it, it doesn't damage paint, it doesn't damage anything. Mm. Now, uh, the worst thing you could possibly use is brake cleaner. That stuff will etch your glass on your windows. It's, it's the same thing to take fingernail polish off. Rough, okay. And it will damage everything. So brake cleaner is number one worst, okay? This here, spray it all over the place, it don't matter. Okay, okay? You buy cases of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but on props, the best way to take care of the props is always the, if you got like a small rag and you've got just plain water bugs and grass this kind of stuff water works best okay any form of chemical can actually mix with whatever's happening here and etch in something that would normally just fall right off the water with the bug guts yes it actually it would react to it and sometimes it'll sear it in because you made a mixture of something that actually does damage yeah water a little bit of a touch of soap anything like that first now, if something's on there that, you know, like a grease or something like that that came out of here, no, water ain't gonna do a damn thing. But all this other crap, this is just straight water. It might need to be primed, but when you put it on your back, uh, you should be able to start it with just a touch of throttle without priming. Okay. Um, I would try to start it without priming first uh, and see how well it works, because a lot of motors don't like to be primed because they keep the gas in the line, okay? So it doesn't take much. Uh, and if that gas stayed all the way in the line and never went down, if you just go pump, pump, pump about four times like that, and then you do, do give it the good shot or hit the button, yeah. with this minor throttle, it's probably gonna start without the prime. Without the prime is really nice if you got, if you got a motor that does that, because it's not, did I put too much in or, you know? Yeah. It's, it's always a freaking thing, I don't know. Right. You know, usually it's gonna take about, three minutes of two to three minutes up and down up and down okay the first minute really you don't want to go past four or five thousand too much once it's warming up up and down up and down and it's pretty much ready yeah it kills me if anybody puts a motor out there that will idle for five minutes and just lets it idle without the prop spinning sometimes it gets so damn hot because no air going through them. yeah that's that's a no-no yeah but if you just get it out there and just take your time on it and you know it's nice and warm and then hook up and go you're fine Okay. Okay. Gonna touch the button. Slow it down a little bit. Let go totally, and I want it to go down to a basic idle. Yeah, I go with that right now. Because uh, when it breaks in a little more, it's going to want to idle just a little more higher than that. And right now, you're at about 24 right now. So that, that's good right there. Yeah, so it feels really good to get out here and put some more time on the motor. They're just little tweaks that uh, Bobby recommended that should go a long way with uh, keeping this thing running well for me. Make sure everything is getting broken in the proper way. Now Donald's out here doing some trike training and they're gonna incorporate uh, more trike stuff in their school. Yeah, I'm super impressed with some of the stuff that Carson is doing out here at his school. I think he's uh, more innovative than your average guy and really smart about what he's doing with his students. 
when I see instructors from different schools getting together, collaborating, sharing ideas and resources, it's really a great thing for our community, really forward thinking and a sign of a mature outlook. I love to see that for our sport. Let's see if I can see my tachometer from here. Yeah, 3,800. Temperature 425. Sport is so expensive to get into and you think you finally you did it you made your investment but no it just keeps going more and more expense still the cheapest way to fly yeah that's right that's right Should be able to pull now. All right, guys, that's it for this trip to Florida. I'm packing up my paramotor, bringing it back to North Carolina. I wanted to show you guys some images also from an event that I was able to attend and spotlight the paramotor. This event is called Touch a Truck, and tons of families and children got to come in and look at all kinds of great vehicles. And I was able to bring the paramotor and show people a small video and the motor itself, the wing, and give them some uh, facts about the paramotor. You can see from this there's fire trucks and bouncy houses and all kinds of great things for families. A ton of people showed up. I could not believe how many people stopped to ask me about the paramotor or tell me that they've seen either myself or one of the other guys locally in the sky. It was really cool and it was great to reach out to the community in that way. I hope you'll join me on my next episode when I discuss some of the most important considerations in the flying area around my home field.